In today's episode, I'll show you how I put together these modular tavern and city walls for use in your tabletop games. Alright, so for our materials today, we're going to be using quite a few things. We're using our Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree, a jumbo-sized craft stick, some tongue depressors or medium-sized craft sticks, a few popsicle sticks, some coffee stirrer sticks, and finally a couple of rectangular or squared barbecue sticks. Alright, so we're going to start things off by making a simple wall panel. So these pieces, the jumbo sticks here, are approximately one inch wide. So what we're going to do is make a two inch wide panel and to do that we're going to cut our jumbo stick into four lengths of 40 millimeters long. So now that I've got these cut, what we're going to do is cut a few extra pieces of coffee stick to go along with them. These are going to be three pieces that are approximately two inches in length. Now I'm going to glue the two jumbo panels together and then stick a coffee stick length down the center of it. Now to kind of help the drying process and make sure it doesn't fall apart I'm just going to clip these together with a couple of binder clips. Now the extra pieces that you cut I trimmed to a couple of angles and these are going to just attach onto the panel to create the impression of some support for the wall sections. And then once that's dry, we'll repeat it on the other side. Alright, so this is our wall panel. And what we're going to do is add some top and bottom supports. So using the barbecue stick, I'm going to trim it to two lengths that are two inches long. And then they are going to get glued to the top and bottom of our panel. And I'm just going to do a quick little trim of the edges to make sure that we have a nice clean edge so that nothing really sticks out and it doesn't look like it was just kind of chopped. Now these skewers are just wide enough that I can take one of the binder clips, fit it around, and it will kind of clamp everything into place. So, this is a nice way to kind of hold everything together while it dries. Alright, so off camera I made a few of these and then we're going to attach the support beams which are our Jenga blocks into the outsides. This will make up the core of the wall system and I put a few together as a corner piece to increase modularity. Alright so now let's go ahead and make some walls with windows in them. So using a tongue depressor I'm going to cut it to a two inch length and then we're going to cut this piece off. This is a few extra millimeters to kind of fill the gap between the top of the tongue depressor and what would be the top of the wall. As you can see, it just kind of fills that extra little bit of gap. And then we're going to cut it in half. Uh, and the reason for that will be shown in just a moment. So now we're going to take some of our coffee sticks, also cut to two inches in length, and we're going to glue them in place on the top of the tongue depressor so that we have a little bit of a gap and it just kind of overlaps the tongue depressor. And then we're going to fit another one on the other side. Again, we want to leave a nice little channel in between and that's going to let us slot our extra pieces inside. Then using a couple of cutoff pieces, I'm going to trim them to fit underneath what's going to be the window sill. And this is just going to create a little bit of decorative support. Kind of give the impression that the window is being supported from the ground up. So now just like with the single wall panel, we're going to attach a piece of barbecue stick to the bottom and clamp it into place. And now to finish out the window sill, we're going to continue the kind of channeled framing around the other edges uh, by taking a few more coffee sticks and again leaving that overlapped gap and just kind of do this on both sides of where the window is going to sit. 
This creates a nice little pocket that will hold the window in place at a later step. All right, so here's what it's gonna look like once it's fully dry. I did cut a barbecue stick to fit onto the top in a later step. So all that needs to be done to finish this panel out is attach the support beams to the sides, which I will do off camera. All right, so now let's make a door for our door frame. So I'm taking a few little coffee sticks, which I cut to a length of one and a half inches. I feel like that's a pretty good size for a standard door. Uh, now I did take one of the sticks and split it in half down the middle. Uh, this is going to kind of make up for the side of the door that's going to have the hinge. So I'm going to clamp this in place and let it dry. Now once it's dry, I'm using a little bit of super glue and I'm going to use a material that I forgot to mention at the beginning, a coffee straw. And this is just going to get stuck in place on the side of the door. And this is going to be our hinge. So then for the doorknobs or door handles, we're going to clip off the end of a decorative toothpick, use a little bit of wood glue, and then stick it on just slightly below the halfway mark. So now we're going to create our door frame using some popsicle sticks that have been cut to 2 inches and 40 millimeters, as well as some barbecue sticks that have been cut to the same length. Now to do this, I'm taking a strip of glue down the center of a barbecue stick and then attaching the popsicle stick in almost like a T, like a part of an I-beam. So after making a couple of those, I'm going to mark out where the hinge is going to go. So I want this about a millimeter away from where the wall supports are going to be, and just going to mark it for the top and bottom, and then using a little hand drill, I'm going to drill straight through on both pieces. So now I'm just going to attach the wall sections onto the baseboard, and then knock it over, stand it back upright, and then apply a little bit more glue onto the top, and then stick our crossbeam on. So here I've attached the uh, side supports, and I'm just going to show you how the hinge is going to work. So we're going to slide a toothpick through, and using the coffee straw, there we go, simple door. So now we're going to apply some what I would call plaster to the wall sections. Uh, so we're going to make a kind of wall plaster paste. So I'm using some lightweight uh, wall filler or kind of like a gap filler that you can find at the hardware store. And I'm mixing a little bit of Mod Podge in with it just to kind of dilute it and water it down a little. This is going to make it a lot easier to spread. I'm looking for a consistency kind of like a creamy peanut butter almost. Then it's just a simple matter of taking a old beat up brush and just kind of slowly spreading it into place. All right, once those are all done, I'm going to let them dry for like 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And then I can take them all out and give them a nice little primer in brown. All right, so now that everything's been primed, we're going to give it a fairly heavy overbrush in raw sienna. This is going to create our baseline wood coloration. Now, doing the brown undercoating is going to make it a lot easier to kind of create a wood appearance with our overbrush. All right, so now we're going to paint up our actual wall plaster. And to do that, we're going to do two coats of unbleached titanium. This creates a kind of nice old rustic wall appearance. Now I am taking care not to get any on the wood, but if you have any little spill over, it's not super noticeable. Once that's done, we're going to do a uh, kind of light to medium dry brush of warm gray. Uh, any kind of gray will work for this. It just kind of gives a nice weathered appearance and kind of helps the whole piece look aged and worn. All right, so now we can finish out our doors. I'm going to use a strip of aluminum tape here, 
and just kind of create some bracing on the top and bottom of our door section. All right, once everything's in place, I'm just going to pin prick a few spots for nails to hold everything in place. And off camera, I will paint this up with a little bit of null oil to kind of dull down the shininess. And then we'll slot the toothpick in, press it firmly into place, clip off the ends, and then this will just kind of hold itself in with tension. So now for our window, I'm going to use this. This is a uh, mesh that you can find in the hardware stores. I think it's used for like vents or something like that. I cut it to 32 millimeters by 22 millimeters and this just barely fit inside of our window pocket that we made. And then it's just a matter of sliding our cross beam into place with a little bit of glue to kind of lock it in place. All right, so here's all of our finished product. I made quite a few of these. We have 10 of our just kind of baseline wall. Uh, and then I made an additional six pieces for windows. These are going to be great for kind of creating entry points for buildings and areas where light would be coming in. And then six corner pieces. This will help me make one large building or multiple small buildings if I need to. And then finally, four doors to kind of round everything out. This will let me make a few extra rooms or a couple of doorways into the buildings. All right, so this was an interesting one. This actually took me a few days to put together, but the end result is gonna save me a ton of time on the table, and I can't wait for my players to be able to interact with these. So thank you all for watching. Please hit that like button, subscribe for future content, comment in the comment section, and be sure to come back next week where I build something that's a viewer request.